Hey, it's Tony Bruski. All this weekend, we are taking a look back at some of the most compelling testimony from the trial of Lori Vallow Daybell. Enjoy. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. We're about to hear a phone call between Colby Ryan and Lori Vallow Daybell that was placed while Lori Vallow Daybell was incarcerated at the Madison County Jail after the remains of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan were found buried on Chad Daybell's property. This was played in court yesterday for the first time. It's the first time it's been released in its entirety to the public, and it really shows, I think, the level of delusion, the level of I, I, I hesitate to say depravity because I think so much of this is utter religious-based delusion. Again, I am not insulting religions here. I am insulting the version of religion that Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell have bastardized for their own means or because of their own mental illness. I think that's the big thing in this trial is, is this extreme mental illness or is this very calculated moves of people doing horrible things in the name of religion to get what they want? Either way, they should be put away forever or taken off this earth, in my opinion. Uh, it's it's uh, so fascinating to hear the level in which someone is almost playing pretend, but I think they believe they are playing pretend. They believe pretend is real. They don't know they're playing that role in this game of life. Here is that phone call in its entirety. This is from the courtroom, so I apologize. There is some background noise uh, from the actual courtroom. We did our best to try and uh, clean up the audio for you a little bit, removing white noise and things of that nature so it can be heard a little bit better, uh, but you will hear some shuffling of papers and such uh, while you listen to this. Go ahead. Hello? 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 You think you can hide from me? Probably because you murdered my siblings. Probably why I'm supporting you. Maybe you should understand. I didn't. I'm sorry that you found that me. You didn't do anything, right? Mom, I have prayed for you. In my worst moments, I prayed for my siblings, who swore to me were okay. I thought I could trust you. I thought that you were a completely different person. I don't know. I don't know when murder is murder. You can make judgments when you are there and you don't know what happened. How? Uh, what happened? They're not taking their own judgments. Mom, you've been shoving BS on my throat for a very long time. I'm going to talk to you. You can be mad. Sweet. Hey, listen to me. I'm not mad. Listen uh, to me. Listen. Fine, listen to me. I sat there and prayed. I can't tell you the amount of pain that I have felt from your decisions in Jesus Christ's name. It fills me to watch you sit here and tell me this is a trial. It kills me to watch you take the big punch you out and say that this shouldn't have happened to you. When you are telling me that Chad Daniel came into your life and all of a sudden Everything changes. I'm talking about my spirit feels this. I'm afraid. I trust in you. 
I gave it every chance I could to pass my limitations as a human being. I pushed past all of everything to try to get to you to help my own mother. You lied to me, specifically to me, more times than I can count. To know that they're gone and you knew and my phone's being texted by my little sister who's not even alive. My little brother who's the sweetest little kid ever. For what purpose? Can you tell me this is God's will for my whole family, including my stepfather, to be dead? After everything that you've tried to tell me, you can tell me right now that Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is on your side. You tell me that with all the conviction in your heart that Jesus Christ is on your side. Please. I can't tell you that. Say it. Say his name. Say that he told you and you followed him on exactness because I have prayed for you. I sat there and tried my best to forgive you and Chad and Alex and I was deceived and I was broken by my own mother. What are you doing? What are you doing? I prayed to heaven and I said, you tell me, Father. They think I don't care about other people. Do you know who you told me? You know what you told me. Because you weren't there. So you You're right. I wasn't there. I was kept That's out. right. And one day you will know murder. One day murder. you will know what actually happened. You're right. You know what? And we I all will stand there and everything. Yeah. He will convict the people who act in his name pure blasphemy. This is funny. This is funny. This is funny. You're laughing. Like this is funny. How come your camera's on? You don't want to look at me in the eye? What can you look at me? It's I just you and me. I'm not helping. I love you. Always will. One day you will see and one day you will understand. Go ahead and hang on. Thank you, Lucy. Yeah, that works for you. You're going to hang on? I don't have anything else to say. You obviously don't know. You weren't there. You weren't there. Summer wasn't there. My mom wasn't there. The police weren't there. The FBI weren't there. You're right. Nobody was there. I and Jamie. Yeah, and that's right. They know. They know exactly what happened. And they love me. And we are still together. Forever, they love me, and they are fine, and they do know the truth, and I know the truth, and we're the only people that do. So you can judge me, call me all day long. Go ahead and judge me. The whole world judge has. Me. The whole world Mother, has judged me. Listen to me. They don't hey, know, and you don't, don't know. know. You know what I've been through, and you don't even give a crap what they've been through. Nobody does, I except for me. I am the one that knows. I am the one that was in the hospital with Tylee no, 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 no. for hundreds of days watching her suffer. Oh. I am the one that was there doing everything with JJ every day. I was the one who did it all these years. You did it all to throw it in the garbage. They're not. You don't know what happened. You <laughs> don't know what happened. It matter what happened if they're buried in your new husband's backyard. Tell me that matters what happened. You tell me that you did this in Jesus' name, Mom. I have to hear that. You believe it and you are not afraid. Every witness of Christ will scream his name when he comes back. So you are that person. 
I am that person. I am that person. And he will come back. Oh, yeah, I'm because that's what it is. You don't even know. You weren't even there. When I say about Friday in October, when I say about Friday in October, what did you tell me? What did you tell me? What lies did you feed me? Why would you lie to me if you were so, if you're with the Lord, and you see me, and I'm just talking purely to you, and you see Jesus Christ, where's the fear? Why would you tell me something? Why were you afraid? Why is everyone against you? Why is everything okay, against my mom? You can be all you want. One day, we will all stand there with Jesus. We will all stand there with Jesus, and you will know the truth of everything about me. Not for me. You're telling me that this was all done in light. Say it. Tell me that this was done in Jesus' name. You don't know what happened. Why? Why don't I know, Mom? Oh, because I was kept in the dark to protect me? You know who needed protecting my little dead siblings? That's who needed protecting, Mom. This Where were you? Is not that. Is that what you think you need? You ran away. I had a plan A month later, you ran away. I never wanted you guys to I would have taken those kids in one second. I would bring them into my home and I would have taken care of them. That's not even a question to me. Yeah, everybody you can't that. say that you don't. Everybody says that. Says it now? Where was my offer? I was the offer. Well, you I had a great thing for them. For well, me, I had a great thing for them. Where did you know why? How about that? If you would have offered me, you would have known. You cannot sit here and lie. That's what everybody says. That is not the truth. Okay, that's what people are they thinking. Were they're assuming, and then you walk away. So we don't know. No, you don't know that. No, that is not what happened. That is not what happened. You tell me what happened. If you can tell me what happened, then I don't care. If you can actually explain it, then it's different. I would love. But you can't. I talk to you about. Mom, you insisted. Mom, you've been saying that you've been wanting to tell me for a very long time. You've been wanting to tell me for a very long time. You've been wanting to tell me for a very long time. You've been wanting to tell me for a very long time. And you never say it. You have no idea how much pain I have felt in my body. I feel like I could die. My own mom, my siblings, and my whole family, my dad, are everyone that's gone except for you, and you're in jail because of it. I have prayed to the Heavenly Father himself and asked him to help me survive this. Do you understand the uh, freaking earthquake that has been caused? Do you know how many people are hurt and broken now? And you're telling me that there's a reason? Why are you following Chad down the rabbit hole, Mom? Why would you follow anybody that is not good? How can you follow someone that cannot lead you to salvation in Jesus, Mom? You can't lie to me anymore. You can't pretend anymore. You can't hide anymore. If you want to tell me what happened, I called you for that very reason. You had enough condemnation for the whole time and eternity, but you're telling me that you're going to stand in front of Jesus Christ and you're going to be fine. That I'm still praying for you. I am still praying for you. I don't know where the lies and all these things are written. I don't see it. I never have. The light of Jesus Christ is the most powerful thing that's ever lived. It's the most loving, embracing thing that has ever happened to this world. And I pray that you see him and fall into his grace. I pray every day. I pray, no matter how mad I am at you, no matter how bad I want to hit your husband in the face with a shovel, I pray for you. I pray for him. You ripped my heart out and you ripped out everyone in this family's heart out. I'm going to be in Idaho next, this week. You need to look me in my eye, Mom. Look me in my eye. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi. 
that right there is an example of mental illness uh, gone wild. This is someone who is not there anymore. They'd probably call it possessed. We'll just go with mentally ill. Not everything is from a demon. Disturbing. If you like the podcast, press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. You don't miss any breaking updates and discussions on the cases that we're following for you right here. I'm Tony Bruski. Stay with us.